Hey everyone, it's Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Pending a new name change, I'm thinking about moving it over to Read It and Eat, which is more directly connected to my small business, Read It and Eat, the bookish culinary book box. So thinking about changing it over, but like I've been Bookmarks and Breadsticks on here for two years. The Bills game is on downstairs, so if you hear my friends uh, freaking out, that is why. Um, but it's been a beat since I've been here on my YouTube channel. I've been super busy getting ready for the holiday season for the Read Any box, but I have been reading. So I at least wanted to check in and tell you everything that I read in the month of September. More than likely, we're gonna go back down to one video a week on this channel, and I have been dabbling on YouTube Shorts. And it looks like that the shorts, they're served on a different part of the YouTube platform, but it's, I don't know how it impacts the algorithm because now it's saying like, you haven't posted a video in three weeks. Well, now it's saying I haven't posted a YouTube video in three weeks, but I have uploaded two other shorts. So bear with me while I figure out the algorithm. I'll also just say it gets super discouraging with this algorithm lately. I put out a great video about two different food comic books slash graphic novels I read and it gets 30 views. So while I still love reading and I will continue to read regardless of the future of this YouTube channel, it is really frustrating to put a lot of effort into reading books and reviewing books to only have 35 people see it despite having a subscri subscribers over 800. So like, I don't know what's going on. I got really frustrated after that video and just, I am still reading. And now we're going to talk about what I read in September. So this was a very heavy book so this was a very heavy fiction month for me, but I did read three nonfiction books this month. The first is I read In-N-Out Burger, Behind the Counter Look at the Fast Food Chain That Breaks All the Rules by Stacey Perman. I actually listened to this as an audiobook. Dan and I drove from, drove to Vermont and back because we ran a Spartan Sprint in the beginning of the month and this is what we were reading. Now I am from New York. I am proudly born and raised in New York. I have never been to In-N-Out, but a lot of YouTubers that I follow, especially foodie YouTubers. So this was a great introduction, uh, start from the roadside stand to what it is today. And also a lot of the dramatics and trauma and suffering that I think the family has had to go through through multiple generations. It's really, a, quite a sad story that the two brothers and essentially a whole generation in this family gets wiped out due to just various tragic circumstances. So it really starts after World War II and with its old fashioned values and how it continues to move through. So in and out is still a privately owned family owned company and a lot of info, you don't hear a lot about this family and this organization except for when the two brothers had died and there was a question about the current president slash CEO. But all in all, I found the book interesting. I do think it takes a little while for this to get running. So we spend the early aughts of this book in the post-World War II era building up the roadside burger stand. The author takes the time to give you the burger history or like what the landscape uh, was of fast food during that time period. Now, as someone who's read a lot about food and specifically burgers, I didn't need that much information for the general reader. I think it was more than important more than necessary to ground the reader in what made In-N-Out an early success. I really liked it. I highly recommend it. I think there's a lot of books out there about, you know, McDonald's and Burger King, but this one about In-N-Out, that's why I picked it up. I didn't know a lot about this company. It's very tight-lipped. It doesn't do a lot of press and I was pretty excited to read it. So I highly, I do recommend it. Maybe not the best, like is it the best book I read this year? No, but I enjoyed it quite a lot. The next book I read this month, Poisoned. This I, uh, have already thoroughly covered in an Unwrap My TBR vlog video, so I will link it above and down below. But this is Poisoned, the true story of the deadly E. coli outbreak that changed the way Americans eat. And this is about the E. coli outbreak from Jack in the Box that killed many young children and really talks about the, the supply chain and how supply chains, especially around beef and this book specifically goes into investigating the supply chain around meat and food processing that led to the E. coli outbreak that killed many young children. I really liked it. I rant about it, rave about it in that, that vlog. So I highly recommend you go check that out if you want more details. I still eat ground beef. It didn't change the way I look at meat. This happened a couple decades ago at this point, but I still think it's very, uh, very worth reading. 
So the third and final nonfiction book I read this month is Workhorse by Kim Reed. This is a newer book. This came out late 2021. It was on my shelves as one of my most anticipated reads last year. And it is... This is definitely in contention for top 10 books of the year. Uh, it's not a perfect book, but who, what is this book about? So Kim Reed spends a, a near decade, nearly two decades in the New York City restaurant scene, including being the assistant to famed restaurants tour Joe Bastianach. I never say that name, right. Joe Bastianach, who's the owner of Babo and partner of Italy and what happens when your job consumes your life. So I think one of the things about restaurateurs is that there are lots of unsung heroes. So let's think about Kitchen Confidential. Gives you the back, behind the scenes look of what goes on in a restaurant. Kim's Read book is gonna tell you what it's like to be the personal assistant of a restaurateur or a famous chef. So to ground ourselves, if you don't know who Mario Batali is, he is one of the most famous chefs in America for Italian based cuisine and for Babo. He also was one of the original Iron Chefs of Iron Chef America, which if you don't know about Iron Chef, I do have a whole other video going through the history of Iron Chef America and the most recent version on Netflix, Iron Chef, the search for the next um, Iron Chef. That is also linked up above and down below. So Mari Batali, well known for the orange hair, the Italian food, and for wearing Crocs in the kitchen. Joe Bastianach is also a very famous restaurateur, and that is who Kim Reed actually directly works for. But she comes from a background actually in social work, and I think it's that empathy and slash the social skills, slightly psychology, psychology skills, that really help her succeed in this role. Joe is volatile, he's always go, 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 and she travels all over the world through all over the world with this man um goes through her 20s and most of her 30s working with joe through many iterations and moments in their career especially launching Italy with uh linda so Italy is this chain in the united states i think it's now global about importing high value premium italian ingredients and food and you watch kim's life slowly you know, she took this job because originally she was a social worker not making a lot of money and then was a hostess on the side at, at Babo. And then when this job opened up, you know, she couldn't pay off her college loans as a social worker. And then two decades go by as this assistant. And it's painful to watch. I mean, I used to work in film and television, so I know what it's like to be an agent's assistant and you work insane hours. You're always afraid of missing a call. I've had things thrown at me, not often, like once, I swear, just once. Uh, but you ride the highs and you ride the lows and it was really powerful to watch and if you have any recent knowledge uh let's say the me too movement and on um joe and mario batali do come under fire in part of the me too movement specifically mario batali for his treatment of women in the workplace and that does come up in kim reed's book and that is probably the only drawback of the book is it might have been based on when she wrote it there wasn't a lot about that fallout. It really is the last, the last third, the dark and stormy night that really opens Kim's eyes up to what her future will be. Can she continue to work for someone associated with something? How people, people, people really judged Kim because she didn't immediately quit her job working for Joe after what happened during the Me Too fallout. And it wasn't very fair because for her this is 10 years of her career and she didn't know and you can't just suddenly quit your job and not have a fallback plan and live in new york city or live anywhere or pay your bills it was a very good book really good i wish we got more of that aftermath because when kim finally puts in her notice and then starts to look at her resume and look at her next moves a lot of things come up like how she's paid so much less than the other executive assistants like batali's uh, executive's assistant, Linda's executive assist assistant, compared to Kim, who's Joe's assistant, she's paid so much less. And the hurt and like betrayal and the things that get lost in the cracks when you're just in this kind of almost rock and roll lifestyle of traveling the world, eating food, going to parties, shaking hands, kiss babies, that a lot of basic human things <laughs> fall through the cracks, like pay disparity. And as a woman, it was really hard to read because I relate to this so much. I really recommend you pick up Workhorse I read this one. I didn't read it. Uh, I didn't listen to it. Sorry, I did read it. I didn't listen to it. I really, I just flew through. It was, I took maybe a day and a half to read. I really like it. I follow the author on Instagram now. 
Um, I highly recommend it. Like, I genuinely think probably top 10, maybe top 20, because it's gonna be really hard to pick my top 10 this year. There's been a lot of good books out this year, but Workhorse is definitely on there. So now moving over into the fiction side of what I read this month, I have already reviewed both Emma, Dreams of Stars, and Meal. These are two graphic novels, comics, all about food. That video is linked above and down below. And if you could really go and watch that and help the views on that video, because I think food comics are great. I just really discovered them. I grew up reading manga. Um, but now I'm really into this world of some people call them graphic novels, some people call them comics, this kind of world in between. And I am loving exploring this space with food as the key storytelling element. So please go check out these two books and watch that video review. Okay, three left. I Okay, three books left. Um, okay, three books left. I Okay, three books left. I read Cafe Con Lychee with Emery Lee. And this was the Envy Book Club's book pick. We, the live show was actually just last night, the night before I'm filming this, with Jesse from Bowties and Books. I almost said bookmarks and book, bookmarks and breadsticks. Bowties and Books. That's Jesse's channel. Wow, sorry. Um, I'm really excited uh, to be expanding my reading. This is the second book with the Envy Book Club I have read, and I'm really proud and expanding my reading. This is about two different, uh, you know, this book is like, called enemies to lovers for high schoolers. It's really not. It's like one really grumpy character who kind of bullies the other character. Um, it's a, a bitter rivalry. I don't even know if you want to call it a rivalry because Theo is the bully in this. Um, Theo works for his, pa his parents' Asian American cafe and their rivals across town, Gabby's parents, are Puerto Rican and own a Puerto Rican bakery. Um, so these are two... Um, rival bakeries or restaurants and then they're both put under threat by this new fusion restaurant that's definitely owned by white people and gentrified as hell that comes to town and they're both trying to work together um there's also elements of soccer they have some really nice supporting character friends perfect book no um mostly because i don't think enemies to lovers just does this really justice because theo's just a real grump and gabby is in the closet um, so he's just struggling with his own things. But it was really fun to read. I really liked it. It's just not perfect, but that's fine. If you haven't already, I recommend you go watch the recap of the live show from NB Book Club, where they go into much more detail about some of the key themes from the, the next uh, next book I read was Vanessa. The next book I read was Vanessa Yu's Magical Tea Shop. This is by Roselle Lim. Roselle Lim's new book um, just came out and I wanted to make sure I read the second one in, it's not even a series, it's just her second book. And Vanessa has the power to see the future but really rejects this power. And when her mysterious aunt comes to town, Vanessa takes the chance to go to Paris and help her open this tea shop and really come face her powers that she's been rejecting for so long. Definitely magical realism, a very cute love story, second chance romance in here. It's not a, I don't view it as a romance book, first and foremost. I think Vanessa is the protagonist and she has to really grow as a character to understand her powers, her family dynamics. There is a romance in there, but it's because she can see the future romance as a part of it, like will they end up together or not and things like that. But it was super cute. And I, it's great with like a cup of tea and a blanket on a Sunday afternoon. And the final book I read this month is the, and the final book I read this month is Arsenic and Adobo. So I launched a book club here in Buffalo with my friend, so Arsenic and Adobo is the October book club pick for the Read It and Eat book club. So I launched a book club with my friend Justine who owns a local tea shop called Cup of Community. Both of our businesses have social good impact and uh, we both give back in different ways to our community. So I thought, why not have a book club together? What is more fun than having a book and a cup of tea? Read it and eat, sips and stories. It's really, I'm just so excited. This is next Thursday night. Um, and I really, I've seen Arsenic and Adobo around for two years and I thought it was great to, I wanted to pick books for book club that were rather contemporary, more recent releases. I know that this year alone, or maybe it was even last year, um, oh no, maybe it was next, mm, Arsenic and Adobo came out, um, H for Hollow Hollow, I think is the name of the second book came out and then there's already a new one slated, which might be coming out even this week. So... 
I don't remember the exact publication, but I'll put the cover of the third book right here. So this is the first in a Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery series. It is a culinary cozy mystery. Um, Lila is the Lila, also Leela. Um, Lila is our protagonist and her basically her ex-boyfriend just gives her tons of grief he's a food critic he really just says awful things and ruins small businesses and he uh drops dead eating some of her desserts and that's how the book starts it was a delight it was just i, I i'm trying not to spoil things but i i knew the inciting incident that caused his death from the very beginning i just didn't put all of the pieces together which was rewarding for me because if I can guess the entire book from the first couple chapters, I'm really annoyed. But I had an idea, a hunch, an inkling that I ended up being right about, but not enough to be like, oh, I know exactly who did it and why. Um, this kind of culinary mystery, though, you are learning as she is learning live. So if that bothers you, that information has to be spoon fed to you as the reader. This might not be the right book for you. I personally didn't mind it. I, to me, it's a cozy culinary mystery. I want cozy. I want low complexity thought levels. So I'm really excited. I'm glad I read it. And I'm so excited for book club next Thursday to see how everyone else thought about it. Okay, those are the books I read in the month of September. There is there were two books I did not get to from my TBR. I still have not finished Kosher Soul, which is okay, taking my time. And then the other was Roselle Lim's newest book, Sophie Goes, Sophie Go. Um, so that's okay. I mean, I read Roselle Lim's first, second book, so I have the next book. I'll carry those two into October. I'm also in the middle of a book about foraging. So I don't know if I'm going to do an October TBR. It's already October 1st as I'm filming this. So I might. My birthday's the 4th. So I'm excited for some new bookish fun stuff. Um, but if you like this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Please don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I have a new handle update. It is now read it and eat box directly connects better to my small business. I do think you'll see some more small business videos on this channel because I think it's worth talking about. It's what I'm dealing with, not even dealing with, it's like what I'm doing with my free time. I read books, I also sell book boxes, so why not talk about it more? Anyway, the longest outro ever. I hope you are well. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. All of the books and videos I mentioned are down below and my bookshop.org link should you want to also purchase them and I'll get an affiliate kickback. See you in the next one, bye.